We're living in a digital world. Most of our global economy is digital and the sheer volume of data is stupendous. It's 2020 and we're living in the future. Data scientist is one of the hottest job on the market right now. Demand for data science is huge and will only grow, and it seems like it will grow much faster than the actual number of data scientists. So if you want to make a career change and become a data scientist, now is the time. This book will guide you through the process. From my experience of working with multiple companies as a project manager, a data science consultant or a CTO, I was able to see the process of hiring data scientists and building data science teams. I know what's important to land your first job as a data scientist, what skills you should acquire, what you should show during a job interview. I will share this knowledge in this book, so that you too can join a wonderful world of data science, truly a market of the future. If you'd like a quick summary of how to become a data scientist, here are three steps. Build your repository on GitHub and start an open source project. You can take a data set from Kaggle and build something around that. Usually classification problems tend to be easier. This will allow you to hone your skills and show a potential employer your engagement. Engage in Facebook and LinkedIn groups about data science and machine learning. Try to find meetups and conferences near you and attend them to meet more people. It's always good to have someone to guide you. Write more code. Data science is a practical skill in the end. Share it on your social media, update your LinkedIn profile to have better chances to find a job. From a technical standpoint you will need to know. Fundamentals of statistics and linear algebra. Data visualization methods, plotly. Data processing and storing algorithms, pandas, numpy. Clustering and classification methods, KNN, K-means, DBSCAN, decision trees, XGBoost. How to apply dimensionality reduction, PCA. Basics of neural networks, Keras. That's it. I will discuss it all in detail in upcoming chapters. Also in the very last and long chapter I have included a data science crash course, which will give you the necessary theoretical background for entry-level data science jobs. A data Let us start the adventure. A data scientist is an expert with a deep knowledge of data, algorithms and data visualization. To be a data scientist, you need to possess the ability to work as part of a team, understand data structure, analyze data, design and create charts and graphs, and write concise code. A data scientist used to be a scientific researcher who combines statistical methods and software development expertise in order to create, analyze, and interpret data. But now you can be a data scientist at a company, crunching data, trying to understand practical implications of real-world commercial data. A data scientist is one of the most sought-after jobs in the industry right now, and it comes with a lot of perks. You can earn anywhere between $120,000 to $180,000 per year. For comparison, a software developer makes between $110,000 to $135,000. We're talking here specifically about the US market, but similar figures can be achieved in other developed economies. If you're not living in the US, Canada or Western Europe, you're still going to have a pretty large salary, in particular compared to what you can earn in other roles. This is again dictated by the fact that there are so few data scientists. On the other hand you can work remotely, as many US or European startups are looking for remote help, which means no matter where you are, you can find a great job. The only thing you need is a good internet connection. Welcome to the global economy of 2020s. Of course a data scientist's salary depends on their specific role, but they typically work in the field of analytics or machine learning, often working with large data sets. They need to have excellent analytical skills, experience in programming or databases, and strong writing skills. A data scientist's job is to develop and analyze data to create actionable insights. These insights can be used in a variety of ways, 
including in various business decisions, and are often used to make recommendations or to help make a business case for a new product or service. Data scientists work across a variety of different data science topics such as business intelligence, web analytics, natural language processing, social media analysis, predictive analytics, machine learning, data mining. The list really could go on and on. There are so many applications of data science right now. So if you're thinking about becoming a data scientist, you can specialize in applying it to one industry of your choice. It's also fine if you don't have any preferences and just want to work with data. For example if you're passionate about people, you could go into e-commerce or marketing, to understand people's behavior on a massive scale and help grow business at the same time. Maybe you're a fan of music, and would love to help Spotify or a similar startup to grow their business. Of some of the key Everything positions and how to apply to these positions on LinkedIn or AngelList or various other sites which allow you to browse job offers in your area, or remotely as I've mentioned. What is data science? Data science is a field of computer science which focuses on data. Data scientists combine methods such as statistical analysis and computer programs. Data scientists have a very specific set of skills that they use in their everyday work. The most basic job of a data scientist is to create data and then use software to analyze the data. There are a few key types of data science jobs. Data scientist. The most well-known job title in data science. A data scientist is a very specialized job. Data scientists are used in data analysis and modeling and are used to understand the complex world of data. There are a wide range of roles available for data scientists. Data scientist positions can range from being a software engineer to having to write machine learning algorithms. They tend to be more on theoretical spectrum of data science. Data analyst a data analyst is a job title which is used for those that analyze large amounts of data to help companies make business decisions. Data analysts use tools like SQL to find patterns in large amounts of data to help them answer complex business questions. A data analyst job requires the ability to understand and communicate with data so they can understand how it impacts their business. They are between practical and theoretical aspects of data science. Data engineer. Data engineers typically work in business or business applications, which are responsible for developing systems, such as a database, that help people make sense of the data. Some data engineers are engineers with a science or engineering background. This means that they may not have a computer science degree, but do have technical knowledge, a degree in mathematics or physics, for example. They are the most practical when it comes to data machine learning engineer. Computer engineers and software developers who work with data processing software, have a very good understanding of the different approaches and approaches to data science. They are specifically oriented towards building machine learning problems which would be put to practical use. That's at least a theory behind those roles. Practically you'll find on the job market each one of them mixed with one another depending on the company you're applying to. That's why it's crucial to read the requirements for the job, or ask about it during an interview, because you might end up in a role which you data haven't science. been applying to. Given that data science refers to numerous general topics, for example machine learning, recommendation, infrastructure, predictive analytics, etc., let's give some examples. I'm going to take a narrow view and look at most in terms of leveraging data science. The most basic data science approach to problems is identifying the problem being solved, looking at a problem, asking what problems are related, how do we solve them and is there a technological solution. Explaining the problem, how can we measure the impact. Predicting the outcome, how many outcomes do we expect to see. How do we determine which outcome is likely to be the most positive? What do data scientists do? 
In an average day, a data scientist will look at raw data sets of any size, look at what it can do and make sense of it, use algorithms to analyze the data to build hypotheses, and test and validate the hypotheses with analysis tools such as statistical, machine learning, and data mining. In an ideal world, a data scientist would be able to make sense of and analyze data at a level that can help the business solve complex problems and identify the best way to get to the bottom of the problem. Summing up, a data scientist is an exciting role because it provides opportunities for growth and innovation. The job involves analyzing data and making it accessible to users so they can make good decisions about the data. It involves understanding data formats, ensuring data security and privacy, and delivering quality solutions to data scientist. Data science is exciting, rewarding, and fun. However, many people find the learning process overwhelming. Our jobs are expected to require a great deal of in-depth knowledge of technical data science areas. Data scientists are in high demand, so you'll need to have a well-rounded skill set if you're interested in this type of job. For a start, to become an intern or a junior data scientist you will only have to know how to implement basic data structures in Python. Communicate and visualize your results well. I will cover both those skills in detail in the last chapter in a form of data science crash course. The goal of this fast-paced course is to give you a theoretical background for any entry-level data scientist job. So altogether this book together with the course at the end will allow you to get your first job. There's one but, you need to practice yourself. No coding, no data science. I'll get back to that in the course. Just remember, data science is practical, and problem solving is a mindset you can develop. Now for some of non-technical skills you'll need as you progress along your career. Excellent analytical skills, including the ability to understand data. Good project management skills, including the ability to plan and manage projects and communicate with others. Good communication skills, including the ability to write clearly and concisely. An understanding of the importance of data integrity and privacy issues as well as the importance of knowing your users. Excellent quantitative skills, including the ability to use data to gain insight and communicate the results clearly. Ability to understand complex information and interpret results. The ability to think critically and problem solve, both in terms of understanding the big picture and in terms of making specific decisions on how to solve a problem. If you're thinking about honing your data science skills you should think about communication first. Communication is critical. Communication is a skill that is difficult to learn and become proficient in. Communicating clearly, concisely and persuasively helps the user understand what you are trying to say. It also gives others a chance to explain their point of view and offer their opinion. Being thoughtful about the ways you communicate will help the audience have the best experience possible with your project. Encouraging third-party involvement, building relationships with your community is a valuable skill. Then comes the trio. Visualization of data. Visualization of statistical information. Data mining. In my opinion, the first two are more important for identifying potential problems while the third is of utmost importance if you want to create great products. To facilitate the developers, we also suggest to come up with an idea of how your visualization can be used to enhance your products. Often, it will lead to the development of a new tool, which can then be used on every step of the way. Try to build helpful dashboards, explain, annotate and document well your projects. This way others can also use them to their benefit technical skills you need. I need to say that first, data science requires you to learn statistics and linear algebra. And it's better if you do that before you start going into machine learning algorithms and do more advanced material. Without statistics you'd be often at a loss why certain methods don't work, you won't be able to interpret results properly and correct them in a good direction. You'll be working twice as hard and long for something which is not necessary. The other technical skill you need is coding in Python. You need to feel at ease with Python as you'll often need to prototype your solutions to a given problem. 
If you can do that quickly, you can then start iterating and arriving at a better solution. If that part slows you down and you need to think each time how to put your solution into working code, then you end up forgetting about the problem you're trying to solve by losing yourself in unimportant technical details. Don't go this way, it's better to spend a couple of months polishing your statistics and Python skills than later having to return to the same material over and over when you'll need to solve a data science to Python problem. and statistics you should start polishing your problem solving skills. This is a never ending story. After all data science is about problem solving. You need to be able to pinpoint crucial data inputs. Ask right questions about your data set. Come up with new algorithms to process data. Extract information from data and use it later. Build complex solutions from small pieces. The best way to practice problem solving is by problem solving. This is a practical skill. You can start coding and implementing algorithms to small problems. Go on Kaggle and find a dataset slash problem for yourself. It's all about finding new problems and trying to solve them. Problem solving is a mindset which becomes a skill with enough practice. You really have to program efficiently and quickly to do data science at levels higher than the most basic ones. And that's because data science is about testing, playing with data and experimenting. You tend to have new datasets often and you need to be able to build a prototype quickly to at least research possible directions of where your work might be going. Without well-learned Python you will lose hundreds of hours each time on simple implementation instead of thinking about algorithms. From a technical standpoint you will also need some of the following, especially if you're applying for non-junior positions. Expertise in Excel, SAS, R or Python, Note, Excel is a programming language. Experience in machine learning. Experience with databases, for example, relational databases or NoSQL databases. Experience in data visualization. A strong technical background and or background in computer science. Ability to learn quickly. In addition, data scientists typically work in teams, which means you'll be asked to learn a lot of things quickly. It's not all about data, but rather information, so you'll need to be an active learner if you want to develop the skills necessary to be successful in this industry. From Zero to Hero This subchapter discusses how does a data science career looks like and what it takes to become an expert. Know your domain. Focusing on a single domain not only increases your intellectual ability but also gives you a rich reach in the wider field of data science. You should try building your skills from a single domain to more vast subjects. Start with Python, go into Django, R, Java, learn something outside your comfort zone. This way, you'll also get better at techniques you use on a daily basis. It's, your models on it's data. all about practice. Instead of just playing with models to fit a numbers model that the machine learning community uses, you should also build upon what has already been done by the community. If you are looking for formulas to model for variables of your domain, the task will become a lot easier if you know all the formulas available in the community. Build upon existing data sets. In this field, it's a matter of either building on existing data sources or building your own data sets. Building on data that has existed for a long time, as opposed to building your own data sets, will give you the proper feedback for your models which will help in the formulation of your models. Focusing on the core strength of data science is tackling the issues around the core problem. Data science offers you unique opportunities to apply what you are learning to real-world use case problems. And by taking advantage of existing data, you will be able to validate your new knowledge. Record your successes. Recording your successes is also a must, as you fail hard and learn. Record the things you've done and any learning that you've done. This will help you when needed to replicate your work. In addition, Data science is mainly about the iterative development of the methods that we've learned. Code, reiterate, code again. You need to validate all of your methods at least three times. By recording your successes and failures, 
we will be able to look back to your work and put it in context in the community of data scientists. Success in data science builds your credibility. To be credible in the industry, you need to do something at least as well as everyone else. If you find the data science market too competitive, then raise your standards by focusing on excellence, making your way up the high-paying data science market. That way you can become successful from this, and that will also motivate other data scientists to innovate. Need to keep learning. Data science is a very fast-paced industry with lots of different challenges thrown at you in every step. This makes it easy to stagnate or fall behind in your life. This is because you have to keep learning to keep up with the competition. Maintaining a high learning pace is also imperative to keep in on top of your competition. This will help you attract better jobs scientist. and enhance your brand. This is a great time to learn about data science. You can start your own business as a data scientist, you can start building a career, and you will make a good living. I have already talked about how to get into data science, and it's time to learn how to do it well. This chapter is about practical things you need to do to become a data scientist. It will take some time, but you will get there. When I first started out, I started out by reading all the books on the subject, but I soon realized that many of them were out of date. I now prefer to get my hands dirty with real data. If you want to start a career as a data scientist, it's time to start collecting data. There is more information and tools that are now available to help you gather data than ever, starting with Kaggle for public databases, GitHub for open source code, Reddit for many links and articles you can scrape and reuse. Getting an internship in data science. Of course you don't have to start a business to become a data scientist. Another natural way is to find an internship. There are plenty of ways to get internships, but the first way is to simply contact a recruitment company, just search on LinkedIn for recruiters in your area and write to them. They will be often willing to help you. The second way is to seek out companies that want to hire interns and reach out to them to see if you could get an internship. Cold calling really works if you can show your work, GitHub again. Check websites of companies to see whether they are looking for data scientists or ask someone already working in a data science team. The more proactive you are, the better. Start writing about your data science projects on LinkedIn and publish posts on Medium to gain more visibility. The perfect situation is when you're approached by recruiters and are the one to choose. The only way to do it is to put in the work into your open source data science projects and popularize what you're doing. If that's not the way for you, because you simply don't feel comfortable with being so public, which is perfectly fine, just start looking for internships on many job websites and groups. It's an employee market and if you can show your engagement and passion, you should be able to get an initial Portfolio call or meeting from a project. First of all you should build a portfolio of open source projects on GitHub. I recommend to create three projects. A classification project where you use a public database, you can download one from Kaggle, more about that in the next paragraph, of images slash texts to sort them and hone your skills with supervised slash unsupervised learning, from PCA to neural networks, through dbscan, knn, etc. An NLP project which would analyze sentiments from tweets from a particular subject and classify them accordingly into positive slash neutral slash negative. That's a classic one, choose a topic interesting to you, so you have a good story to tell about it. A scraping project, where you scrape different sources to extract information, that can be scraping sports news if you're a sports fans financial fluctuation if you're into finance or data science novelties. The end goal might be creating an automated website with scraped and extracted content. Easy to show during a job interview. If you're more advanced then you definitely should play around with latest machine learning algorithms. For example you can try GANs, generative adversarial networks, and generated some faces or cats. Reinforcement learning with easier games. GPT-2 and text generation. You have endless opportunities here.
you definitely should show that you're well versed in neural networks and their fundamentals like Keras, PyTorch, TensorFlow. A great resource is Papers with Code, Google it, which links machine learning papers with GitHub code. That's a very efficient way of finding most recent findings in machine learning. Know what you know and what you don't know. Even if that sounds obvious you should be able to answer questions about your knowledge, particular technicalities or problems. Actually the most important question you'll be asked is what was the hardest in a given project. If you were struggling with a particular technical issue, why and what it was. How did you overcome it? Those are the basic kind of questions that you should be prepared to answer. Be ready to talk about algorithms in more detail, different methods you have used in the past. Be open and share also what was problematic for you. This can only help during a job interview. The last thing which is often overlooked by data scientists is putting up a coherent LinkedIn profile with explanation of what you did in the past and where you're at currently. If you have any gaps in your career be sure you'll be asked about them, there's nothing wrong with six months stay on barley surfing, you should just be honest about what motivated you back then and what you wanted to achieve. I imagine that a good argument would be you wanted to have a break from your screen, wanted a restart, wanting to work as a digital nomad, there are plenty of reasons to explain why this option was the best also for your career. You should also ask for recommendations from your past employers. They can write it directly on LinkedIn, just a couple of sentences is enough. If your last departure wasn't really planned and you feel bitter about it, try to explain why and what you expect from your next employer. You should be able to say precisely why you want to change your job. Is it because you're looking for new challenges? If yes, why you can't have them at your current job? Speaking clearly about your previous work experiences is a huge asset. Shine. Summing up there are three things you should do to really master a job interview for a data scientist position. Build a portfolio of GitHub projects. Know what was the hardest part of each of your project and how you overcame it. Polish your LinkedIn profile. I'm a huge fan of building your own portfolio of open source GitHub projects as a way to grow as a data scientist. In the next chapter I am going to discuss a list of projects you can try for yourself if you're into practical data science. Those will definitely open get source you data science projects on GitHub. Science in data science can be misleading. After all data science is a very practical endeavor. You need to code a lot in order to really get it. Let's discuss how to get practical. Work harder, work smarter. So you want to be a better data scientist? Code. Gather databases and visualize, analyze, understand it. And then learn how to apply that knowledge to new data sets. A big part of being a data scientist is to make sure you're doing all your analysis on as much data as possible, because data is your biggest asset. No matter how clever algorithms you're using, if you don't have enough data, you won't progress. You can always go back and try to get your best set of results again, but as a data scientist you really want to get as much data as you can before you start looking at it in a more systematic way. Start building a GitHub portfolio. The sooner you start building a GitHub portfolio of open source projects the better. This way you'll not only learn a lot, you'll also get a better chance at finding your next dream job. It hugely increases your visibility as a data scientist and allows you to document your data science journey. If you're interested in working in the data science and you're not sure which company to choose, try and get a quote from a company that is in a very specific niche or category. It'll be easier to convince the recruiters that you can fill a specific job requirement rather than being seen as a general data scientist. Practically speaking the best way to do that, would be to research the companies in a particular niche, for example through Crunchbase, and then build a portfolio of data science projects related to that niche. If that niche is your hobby as well, it's a win-win situation. What makes a good data science project? If it is something you think you can do, or something that you think is a good fit with the data science mindset, and you have the chance to learn the skills and experience needed to do it, take it. Data science projects are all about learning, 
and the better the data science skills you have, the more likely you are to build a successful project. The following is a list of the most important aspects to consider when creating a data science project. The project needs to have some sort of measurable result. The project should be simple. The project should be well understood by the client. The project should be in the client's control. The project should be in their best interest. The project should provide clear, concise information and results. You should start a project with the data. It is often the first step. Start with what you know, what you don't know, and the reasons why. You project should have a clear project with a clear idea of what you are trying to do. If you don't, you will not have a clear direction. That's often fine at the start, but with time you should plan your work to get the best results. Experiment. Data science is all about experimenting. A good tool can give you a better understanding of what your data looks like, but it's only useful if you can extract insights from it. When looking at a data set, you need to be able to do a lot more than see if it has a pattern. To get insights from a data set, you need to know what to look for. What are the patterns that you can identify and how can you turn that into actionable insights? If you've got your head around these questions, then you can start to get insights that can lead to business outcomes. You can start to use these insights to start to improve the quality of your work and work on your skills. Once you've got a solid understanding of what you're looking for, there are many ways you can go about getting insight from your data. Finally, one of the best ways to look at your data is by creating your own report. Have a spreadsheet where you note everything you did in a project. This way you'll keep everything well organized, you'll learn a lot and be ready to tackle more complex projects. GitHub Project Ideas Let's finish this chapter with 5 GitHub projects you may try to do for yourself before you approach job interviews. The following 5 ideas will let you build a varied and fun portfolio of projects. 1. Clustering Methods One of the first things you learn after you learn the basics of Python is how to classify data and put them into groups relative to their different features. You can classify text according to sentiments or images according to similarity. You can go for Kaggle's different data sets to classify sports top performers and try to determine what's making an athlete a star. Options here are endless and you should definitely go into playing data as much as you can. As for the methods, you'll be using definitely DBSCAN and or KNN to cluster your data. Also, some dimensionality reductions, like PCA or TSNE, might be helpful. I will discuss those methods in the last chapter. 2. Scraping websites and extracting information. What's more fun than choosing a website which you visit often and try to scrape it? You can go for financial news, social media trends or best cooking recipes. You can even try to scrape Google and other search engines, it's not hard in Python. Scraping a single website is fun because you get to understand how websites are built and their flow of information from a totally different perspective. Scraping search engines is great for learning how different pieces of information are spread throughout the internet. And if you connect the two, you'll get an amazing project. News feed about be using requests subject. library to scrape and beautiful soup to clean the HTML code. Alternatively, you can also use Selenium to scrape. 3. Data cleaning. Here's a standard though a little tedious task cleaning data. It is standard because this happens to be a part of almost any real world problem you will encounter as a data scientist. It is tedious because you might end up spending long hours thinking about how to make sense of the enormous data you have. Data cleaning might involve taking ticks of stock prices and trying to make sense of that, by clustering, by good visualization. Or if you already have a data set, like your old documents and photos, it might involve trying to tidy them up, by deleting those which are not needed anymore. Data cleaning might be as easy as deleting unwanted files to as hard as trying to use machine learning to spot anomalies in your data set to delete those. One of the standard libraries here is pandas and numpy. 4. Data visualizations. Whether you have a nice data set or not, 
The best way to understand data is to try to visualize it in many different ways. It's not only helpful for you, but also for your potential clients or employers. By visualizing it might be much easier to spot what's going on. Here Plotly comes in handy, which is a standard Python library for plotting functions and graphs. If you want to build an interactive dashboard then you should try using Dash in Python. 5. Neural Networks Time to get into machine learning. Neural networks are not as hard as you think. Their easiest instances are very quick to implement, especially if you use a framework of Keras, which does a lot of work for you. The entry point for neural networks is classifying handwritten digits. If you Google NIST Python you'll find plenty of tutorials on how to use simple neural networks to do it. From then you can go into more complex datasets, for example images of animals, and problems, multi-class classification, anomaly detection. How to manage your data science projects. One of the hardest things about this job is managing your data science project. Organize your desk and work environment. Schedule your tasks and prioritize. You probably have to think through all of your options for how to approach every aspect of your data science project. Here are a few things you should keep in mind as you move prioritize through these your tasks. Steps. When I was first in the industry, I would spend a lot of time looking at what was next on the data science agenda. After a few months, I realized that this was not a very productive approach. What was really helpful was to focus on a few key data science tasks at a time. When you do this, you're going to be able to complete your work faster. In fact, you will have much more clarity in what you need to do next. You can run the following process. Pick the data you want to analyze. Identify the research questions you want to answer. Define the type of analysis you want to perform. Pick a research plan. Create a data pipeline. Write your code. Repeat. Once implemented, you can run it over and over, to get better each time. 2. Figure out what your job is. The first thing to do when building a data science team is to figure out what your job is. If you're working in a startup, it's probably pretty clear, you need to build something useful and interesting that people can use. But in your company you might need to do some pretty fancy analytics stuff, like Using data science to build a better product, or a better solution, for your customers. Improving your marketing and selling strategy. Driving ROI for your business. The trick is to figure out which one of these things you actually need to focus on and to do right now. So we're back to prioritizing. 3. Keep a good documentation of your project. Even when you know what your business does, you don't always know what your next steps will be and how long it will take. You may need to start again, or you may have new tasks you don't even know about. I keep an Excel spreadsheet, and Trello and Evernote, for these things. What I need to do today. How long until I can start. What else needs to be done today. What are the next steps that need to be taken. Four. Make sure that your team is always on the same page. Every time you make a change, you need to make sure that everyone is on the same page. A good team is built on collaboration. If everyone is working in sync, your company is going to be better and faster. Keep it simple. 5. You need to think before you type. If you make a mistake, you can try to make it up later. Or, you can make it up now and move forward. We have all made mistakes in our lives. It's part of the learning process. You need to be aware of what the other person is typing in order to avoid a mistake. 6. Identify your most pressing research questions. As you move through this process, you will see the different challenges of your research and you'll want to identify the questions that need to be answered most. Data science is practical. It's all about how you handle data and what insights you can gain from it. So when you need to make decisions, it's important to take the time to consider the data that you've already collected. It's a good idea to keep a few key Five documents around to, to help a data scientist. Decisions. 
Let's now focus on actually finding a data science job. There are a couple of steps you might take to locate opportunities right for you in any country. 1. Find a company which needs data scientists. Companies will often hire data scientists for specific projects. For example, a financial institution might have a company-wide project where they want to build an algorithm for analyzing data. If you're interested in learning about the types of companies hiring data scientists, go on AngelList and start going through data science jobs in startups. Remember you can both look locally but also globally, because many companies are willing to hire a data scientist to work remotely for them. Angel List supports this type of remote jobs, so have a look there. Another option is looking at Crunchbase to see artificial intelligence or data science companies in your location. Even before your first job you might want to use Fiverr to get your first gig. Fiverr is a perfect way to start earning as a data scientist, no matter who you are and where you live. All you need is a connection to the internet and then a good, complete profile so that people can see you. I'm still using Fiverr myself from time to time to find interesting consulting roles from around the world. 2. Apply to data science internship programs and training programs. Internship programs and training programs are a great place to get a glimpse into the industry and learn a new skill. Reading a data science book can help you gain a deeper understanding of the industry. In later chapters I review most useful data science books. 3. Build your own open source project. While data science is becoming more and more important in the industry, there are still tons of data scientists that are not part of the larger open source community. There are tons of free tools and resources on GitHub, and plenty of data scientists are eager to share their knowledge and join a local data science group. Some cities have local data science groups that are dedicated to helping members. While it's important to try to stay up to date with the latest tools and techniques, this community is where you can learn about data science as a whole and how it fits into business. Each larger city now boasts an active group of data scientists. 5. Join a data science association. Data science can be very intimidating and it can be difficult to start learning about different techniques, but that doesn't mean you can't do it. Here are just a few things to consider before jumping in. First and foremost, it's important to get involved in data science discussions and community-driven discussions to understand what data science is, where it is heading, and how best to leverage it. Reddit is great for that, as well as various Facebook groups. A good place to begin is by attending data science meetups and data science conferences. These meetups provide a space where anyone can learn about data science, be it the basics or advanced techniques, as well as provide the tools and training to get started. If you don't have a specific project in mind you can look at the events list to see who is hosting the meetup and if there is a specific time when it is happening. After you finish looking through the meetups list I would recommend trying to connect with the organizers. Attend any conferences that they will be attending and ask them if you can attend their next data science meetup. You can also follow the organizers on social media science. to see what's going on. We can divide sources of learning data science into three groups. Data science courses, data science online materials, data science books. Firstly I should mention that I'm assuming that you've already know the fundamentals of Python, at the level of being able to import different data formats and clean them in a Jupyter Notebook. If not, read the Data Science Crash Course at the end of this book, it's for you. Secondly you should know basics of statistics and linear algebra. If you don't know any of these, the I recommend you start with. Codecademy to learn Python for free. For online and free source of statistics check out ThinkStats for a longer treat. You can also find many posts online which cover quickly how to manipulate with matrices, probabilities or other fundamental mathematical concepts. However you probably would like to spend more time on those fundamentals if you're just starting and the best for that would be taking courses as a free reader slash listener at your local university or follow a curriculum of one of established universities. Data Science Courses 
There are many courses and organizations that have been established to help people to get started. Google things like Data Science Boot Camp or Data Science for Everyone and you'll find courses specifically meant to help people to get started with data science in Python. The offline courses can be quite expensive. But if you are ready to jump in and start learning, I would recommend you spend a couple of hours a week to take the course online and you will definitely be more comfortable. If you decide to go a the data science boot camp, I'd recommend that you first work on a real project that you can show. This will give you a good idea of what data scientist does. If you want to complete courses in machine learning and data science, the first one you've probably heard about is the course by Andrew Ng. Machine Learning by Andrew Ng on Course Era, it covers fundamental concepts of machine learning, is a bit more theoretical, less coding involved and is a fantastic source of what to know. However if you're really just starting there are other sources you should check. So here's the list of more basic courses that you should take at the beginning of your data science adventure. Harvard Data Science course takes you through basics, pandas, scraping, regression to machine learning. Introduction to Data Science in Python by University of Michigan is highly rated, basic introduction. It's on Coursera so it's free if you don't need a certificate for it. Deep Learning, though it's far from introductory, this course is another one from Andrew Ng you should at least hear about. IBM Data Science, one of the most popular data science courses on Coursera right now. It is offered by IBM and offers a complete entry into data science from scratch. Especially great if you want to have a certificate for completing it. I'm always trying to read a lot and books I list below are some of my favorites. For a more complete list, see one of the last chapter of this book. Data Science from Scratch, First Principles with Python, this is probably one of the first book I've read about data science. It really starts with basics and do not assume any knowledge of Python. Great for absolute beginners. Python Data Science Handbook, Essential Tools for Working with Data, More Advanced Book which will lead you through different data science techniques. Introduction to Machine Learning with Python, A Guide for Data Scientists, Another Introductory Book, this time focused more on machine learning. Data Science Materials I'm a huge fan of GitHub. Well, like almost everyone. A really great source to learn data science is actually through browsing GitHub's countless open source repositories. The way to browse it is to search for a given concept and add GitHub on Google. For example data visualization GitHub or scan GitHub. You can also browse papers with code, www.paperswithcode.com, to see the most recent research done with a code you can see and use. This way you'll be able to quickly find working code that you can play around with on your computer. Another thing is data science conferences. You should definitely look for some in your area and attend at least one to see what data scientists talk about and what is trending right now. This is a great way to keep up with the latest tools and techniques in this field and learn from the best data scientists in the industry. If you like to stay updated with what the data scientists in the field are writing, Keep an eye on the data science subreddit and the blogs of the best data scientists. And make sure to keep up with all the latest tools and techniques the data science community is developing in the world of big data. This will ensure you have access to the latest tools and techniques that will allow you to leverage your experience and skills. It's not always easy to become a data scientist, even for the best of engineers. However, it's not too difficult for any student willing to work hard and there are a few things you should know beforehand. This chapter takes a look at them, providing you a clear roadmap to succeed in data science and giving a framework to learn anything. This will also help you approach coding problems especially during a job interview. 1. What you need to do. Set a target number of hours. Plan what you need to know slash experience in order to write code. Pick an interesting dataset and perform a search. Acknowledge that the hardest is to start. Learn how to ask the right questions. 2. Problem Statement For every question, write the problem statement in plain English. 
This is also a good time to take a look at some technical examples of the problems that real companies encounter with the data science process. 3. Write some code. Make your code and run it. The interviewers will take a look at the code and answer the questions afterwards. Estimate how much time you will need for the data preparation. What should be an average number of people on your team for solving the problem? What can go wrong? Write down the tools that you will use to tackle the problem. 4. Prepare and evaluate your answers. Make sure to have valid solutions that are both concise and creative. Write down your responses to the questions. Make notes. Show engagement. 5. Review your answers. Refine your answers, ask yourself why you didn't make use of some existing frameworks or tools. This will help you identify areas that you need to learn more about, and convince yourself to write up some material for future interviews. 6. Show your solution to the problem. As a bonus, prepare and show your solution to a third party who will help you get in touch with the organization that interviews candidates. Prepare a notebook with all of your solutions so you can discuss your solutions with interviewers. 7. Identify assumptions. Define the assumptions you think your interviewer has in the company and the tasks that you will be dealing with. Do not compromise on these assumptions as it's a good way to separate yourself from the crowd. 8. Identify solutions. Identify the solution that meets your interviewer's expectations. Ask questions, be open and honest, try to understand your interviewer's perspective. 9. Build a model. Every question has a possible answer that fits the data you have. Invest your time in defining a robust solution, applying it, and prove it during an interview. The experience in programming is crucial for data science, you will have to execute the code and find bugs. The faster the better. If you are nervous, you can also ask questions in the interview about how to structure your code to fit with the structure of the company and how to track what work you need to do for the upcoming weeks common if there are multiple scientists make. Interview. Let's review seven common mistakes which people make along the way. Thinking about those will help boost your career and learn much quicker. Trying to learn multiple tools at once. The result is that we become paralyzed with an inescapable set of tool-specific knowledge that we do not have any ability to leverage on a broad level. This is why so many programmers spend time learning and practicing new skills on a particular tool at a particular moment, when they have little or no ability to adapt and adapt quickly to new situations in the real world. A common analogy is a person who tries to learn a new sport by learning a lot of different skills in a short period of time. Instead of being able to play every sport in the world, he eventually learns that the sports he can play at all are all very different, and he ends up having very limited skill in many different sports. The key to building successful learning is to focus on developing one skill at a time, with the goal of learning to execute the skill effectively as soon as possible in the real world. Using existing code as a black box. This is a common pitfall for many people who begin learning to code. They think they have all the answers and are content to leave their solutions as black boxes, ready for them to figure out. However, when you start learning to code, you need to make decisions about your code. You need to know what your code is going to do, what it's going to look like, how you're going to test it, and so on. You should be making these decisions over time, with the guidance of a structured approach that helps you prioritize your choices, while also allowing you to learn as you go. That said, there are things you can do to help you learn more quickly. Don't use existing code unless you understand it well. Even if it seems like a good idea, you should avoid someone else's code unless you can be certain you know what you're doing. Of course if you want to prototype something quickly that's the fastest way to go, but projects in production stage should be well reviewed and understood. Use your own names for things. When you write code in a new project, you should have a good understanding of what's going on inside of other projects. Lacking consistency in studying. This one applies to everyone, data scientists, software engineers and students. 
it is easy to get distracted by news, social media, YouTube. We study for some time then we give it a break for a week or the next two months. The rest of the time, we're looking at a ton of new stuff. This is not a big deal if you're just starting out, but it is if you're trying to become an effective data scientist. If you don't have a plan for how to move forward in your studies and become an effective data scientist, are you are not going to be successful. The first is that it's too easy for beginners to give up. They're busy, so why bother? The second part is that they have their heads in the sand. They believe that data science isn't a real discipline because it's too hard. I'm going to argue that it isn't, and I'll give a specific and realistic set of tips on how to become an effective data scientist. All in all you should remember a couple of things. Having a plan is a must to organize your time effectively. Be persistent in studying one thing at a time until you understand it. Don't give up too easily. Working on those things will allow you to grow as a data scientist and as a person. Not spending enough time on exploring and visualizing the data. If you're a data scientist data is the key to understanding what is really going on. Data is the thing that helps you understand the context and the way things work. Data is the tool you use to get to the root cause of the problem. So the more data you have, the more you can understand your problems, to better solve them. You need to give yourself time to play with the data, visualize it in different ways, label it, make it nicer. There's an exciting part of visualization, which I call the beauty of visualization. The beauty of visualization is that it's a form of problem solving. If you think of visualizations as solving problems rather than finding information, you'll be in good company. Problem solving is one of the defining characteristics of visualizations. I believe that one of the primary advantages of visualization over other forms of problem solving is that it doesn't require us to make the final decision on which solution to choose. It allows us to see the whole picture, and thus be able to make a good decision based on the whole picture. And since there is no final decision, the final outcome is always best. Giving tools and libraries precedence over the business problem. As a data scientist, you should be practical. It's always nice and intellectually challenging to think about theoretical aspects of data science, but in the end your job is to understand data in order to solve a business problem. Data science requires a great deal of experience and a lot of technical knowledge. The data you are working with is not always easy to work with. If your goal is to build a new product, data is everything. It is literally the only tool that can be used to make this new product a success. You don't have time to develop an advanced framework or an advanced data modeling technique. You need to build your product. And this means you need to solve the business problem of your company. As a data scientist you should be working with data every single day. The crucial question here is. How are we going to determine which of a billion possible combinations of data inputs will create discussions and competitions? It's natural that we tend to avoid discussions sometimes, because we don't feel confident in our solutions or simply because we don't want to be challenged. But shying away from them is a big mistake as it leads to stagnation. You won't learn anyway this way. In order to learn you need to go out of your comfort zone. This means taking risks and making a lot of mistakes, but that also means making mistakes that work. It means you have to be in the uncomfortable zone and take risks in order to learn. You can't just run away from problems and don't take the time to reflect on what you did wrong. That's what you are going to have to do in order to learn how to build working projects. Don't wait to get some feedback on what you did, ask for it yourself. You might be surprised how receptive the feedback is. You'll be surprised by how often people have questions about what you did or how to do it. Give yourself some time to practice. Practice is an amazing tool for any programmer. You'll notice you become more comfortable as you start doing more and more. Don't worry too much about being perfect. Don't sweat the details. Just get it done the first time. If you screw up on the first time, you can correct it and get back to where you were before. In your first few times doing anything, you'll be a bit nervous. That's normal. Keep calm and carry on. Not working on communication skills. 
Solving a problem is one thing, but communicating it to the rest of the team is another. You need to work on your communication skills to convince others and explain to them what you've done and how does that fit the whole process. There are a number of ways to achieve this, each with its pros and cons. One of the most effective ways is to have a dedicated communication channel for the team. For example, a Slack channel can be useful to communicate what your plan is for the project. You may even be able to use a dedicated channel on your workstation so everyone can talk to each other in private, saving them from the hassle of asking others for their input. Many teams also do stand-ups, quick meetups each day or each week to explain their results to each other. These can be very helpful in keeping people on track in a competitive environment. But even without the stand-up, people are more than welcome to come in on any time to ask questions and ask for assistance. Being helpful to others is one of the best way to learn more yourself. Conclusion Every company values data science, it is highly unlikely that they will hire someone who doesn't have sufficient skills. This can be a negative point in case you go into the company already believing that you are the best data scientist for that company. It's worth bearing in mind, however, that some teams don't really care about and or find great candidates. Be careful. Good company will help you grow. Bad data company will make you lose, lose your dream. If you're learning data science then apart from reading open source code on GitHub, Oxiv papers or course materials, a good idea is to read a data science book with actual coding examples, here's the list of data science books you should read. Introductory Level If you're just starting your adventure with data science, you should definitely try. Data Science from Scratch is what the name suggests, an introduction to data science for total beginners. You don't even have to know Python to start. If you're a total beginner but you'd like to go more in machine learning direction from, Introduction to Machine Learning with Python is a book for you. It also doesn't assume you know Python. Intermediate Level If you've already read one or two data science books, done one or two projects for yourself and got accustomed to working with data a little bit, here are the books which will take you further. Python for Data Analysis is the perfect way to get to know better standard Python libraries like NumPy or Pandas. It is a complete treatise starting also from reminding you how Python works. Python Data Science Handbook is a great guide through all standard Python libraries as well, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Scikit-Learn. Python Machine Learning is somewhere between intermediate and expert. It will appeal both to experts and people who are somewhere in the middle. It starts gently and then proceeds to most recent advance in machine learning and deep learning. Great read. Python for Finance is a must read if you're into finance and data science. It focuses on how to use data science tools to analyze financial markets and have many great examples illustrating that. It's very practical and will also appeal to people who don't work in finance on a daily basis. Expert Level If you're approaching expert level, then actually reading scientific papers often makes more sense than reading books. However it is also time you study and implement deep learning in your solutions to go beyond the classical statistics. Three fantastic and now standard references are. Deep Learning with Python was written by a creator of Keras, one of the most popular machine learning libraries in Python. The book starts gently, is very practical, gives pieces of code you can use right away and has in general many useful tips on using deep learning. An absolute must read in deep learning. Deep learning is an amazing reference for deep learning algorithms. It doesn't contain much code, but has great insights about how one should approach problems with machine learning, written by pioneers of deep learning. If you're into mathematics, then you'll love machine learning, a probabilistic perspective. It's a tour de force through mathematics behind all machine learning methods. You probably won't be able to read it at once. But it's very useful as a reference in machine data science. In one of the final chapters, let's consider the ever living question academia or business? 
If you're considering doing a PhD in data science, you're going to have to decide whether you want to use your PhD to get a job as a data scientist, or to engage deeper in research and try to solve really complex, theoretical problems. This can be a challenging choice. Is PhD for you? Another thing is, whether a PhD is for you at all. In order to choose well, make sure data science is your passion and you're willing to spend an enormous amount of time on it. Make sure that you'll be able to fund your research. Be constantly curious and eager to learn about new things. Be persistent and don't easily give up. If you've decided it's for you, but you still wonder whether to do it at all, here's a couple of things to wonder. Do you want to stay in academia afterwards and do research? Do you want to go to a corporation or a startup? Do you want to become a freelancer, consultant or start your own business? Depending on which of those three you choose, you'll enter a graduate school with a different mindset. In the first case, you should focus on research as much as possible. In the second case, apart from research you should think about networking outside of academia and start spreading news about what you do in a form accessible to a general audience. In the third case you will need to polish your soft skills, communication, strategy, planning, in order to use your time effectively. What is a PhD in data science? Now to the PhD, doing a PhD in data science can mean a couple things. PhD in statistics at an economy faculty. PhD in mathematics at applied mathematics faculty. PhD in computer science or machine learning at computer science faculty. The answer which to choose will depend on how much coding hours you'll want to put in in the end and how much practical you want to get. Option is for those who want to be practical but not code much. Option is for those who don't want to be necessarily practical. Option is for those who want to be practical and code a lot at the same time. There's no better or worse options here, it all depends on what you want to do after your PhD. Whether you imagine yourself coding for 8 to 10 hours a day, you want to meet people and visualize data, you want to use data science in business decisions, answering those questions will let you decide. The key here is to choose the ones that are most relevant to you. There is a life after PhD. When you finish your research, you can look forward to a future of full-time and part-time jobs, or a life of consulting for a consultancy, doing data analytics for clients, or working in a company that's involved in data analysis. The best decision for you may be to find a job that fits your strengths, and use your PhD to help you achieve your goals. Whether that's getting the best data science job in the industry, Already. or getting more research That's experience. all when it comes to this guide. Thank you for reading this far. You now know everything needed to find a data science job. What remains is honing your technical skills. You can now open your Jupyter Notebook, and start coding to polish your skills. Go ahead and build a couple of open source projects on GitHub, with data from Kaggle. Join Facebook groups for data science and start talking with more senior people about their data science jobs. Polish your LinkedIn profile. Soon, you'll find yourself starting your first data science job. Good luck. And thank you for listening to this audiobook.